Good morning. It is Tuesday, November the 1st, 2022, Tuesday in the week of Trinity 20, but of course, the great feast of all saints, all the hallows, all the holy ones of God. We're here at the rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, we're bolstered by 1662. We're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is glorious in his saints. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts but they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is glorious in his saints. O come, let us adore him. Why do we give thanks to the Lord our God? Because he is a great God. Uh, he is the maker and preserver of all things. He is the ruler and governor of all things. 
And this same God, this great God, has set his love upon us, has taken us to be his holy people, to be his, calling us to be his saints. And um, what? how can we show forth our gratitude to him better than to hear his voice, to heed his word, to know his will, to walk in his ways, that we may enter into his rest. The Psalms for All Saints Day are proper Psalms, and uh, we are going to read Psalms 1 and 15 and 112. All of them speak uh, of the vocation to holiness, um, uh, of ourselves in Christ and of Christ in us. So we begin with the first Psalm, which is first and foremost a Psalm about Christ, but also about all those who are in Christ and the, the uh uh, holiness uh, of, to which they are called. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he exercise himself day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water side, that will bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaf also shall not wither, and look whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them, but they are like the chaff, which the wind scattereth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not be able to stand in the judgment, neither the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 15, page 357, speaks of the integrity of those who are been called by his grace. Lord, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle, or who shall rest upon thy holy hill, even he that leadeth an uncorrupt life, and doeth the thing which is right, and speaketh the truth from his heart, he that hath used no deceit in his tongue, nor done evil to his neighbor, and hath not slandered his neighbor, he that saith not by himself, but is lowly in his own eyes, and maketh much of them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth unto his neighbor, and disappointeth him not, though it were to his own hindrance. He that hath not given his money upon usury, nor taken reward against the innocent. Whoso doeth these things shall never fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 112, page 43, speaks of the works, the good works, done by the God-fearing man. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. He hath great delight in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the faithful shall be blessed. Riches and plenteousness shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the godly there ariseth up light in the darkness, he is merciful, loving, and righteous. A good man is merciful and lendeth, and will guide his words with discretion. For he shall never be moved, and the righteous shall be had in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of any evil tidings, for his heart standeth fast and believeth in the Lord. His heart is established and will not shrink until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed abroad and given to the poor, and his righteousness remaineth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The ungodly shall see it, and it shall grieve him. He shall gnash with his teeth and consume away. The desire of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the fifth chapter of the Wisdom of Solomon. This is one of the books, the apocryphal books of the Old Testament that are read not to establish doctrine, but for instruction in life and manners. And hear how we hear about the uh, vindication of the righteous, of the saints in a world uh, against uh, uh, their enemies. At that time shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. 
and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What hath pride profited us? Or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, and as a post that hasted by, and as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found, but the light air, being beaten with the stroke of her wings, and parted with the violent noise and motion of them, is passed through, and there and afterwards no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parteth the air, which immediately cometh together again, so that a man cannot know where it went through. Even so we, in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end, and no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest, and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. But the righteous live for evermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. Here endeth the first lesson. Uh, the whole uh, uh, movement of the ungodly is towards non-being. Uh, the vanity and futility of their lives is exposed in the judgment, while as the, the righteous, those who are righteous by faith, the whole movement of other lives is to fuller and deeper being. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually to cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, an adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father, we believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, that thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 19th chapter of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, 
which did corrupt the earth with their fornication. Uh, this is Babylon the Great, the earthly city, the city of men united by love of self to the point of contempt for God, as Augustine said. And the fornication by which she corrupts the earth is, of course, spiritual adultery, infidelity, faithlessness, uh, running after false gods. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand, the blood of the martyrs. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, the church, hath made herself ready. And to her was arrayed that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves as one body in Christ, and each other, and all those for whom we pray, and the whole church and people of God, to his gracious and watchful care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men, that God's ways may be known to them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations, that the whole world may be filled with his glory. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by his good spirit, that all those who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, and their peace, order, and good government. 
and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, and for all those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they, God might so comfort and relieve them uh, according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Bid your prayers for all those who are critically ill, uh, uh, debil have debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, those in isolation, those in palliative or um, uh, care, those in hospice care, for widows and orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for prisoners and captives, for the fearful, the wounded, the grieving and the dying, uh, for all women in childbirth, all young children and their caregivers, all women expecting children and the children they were expecting, those burdened with anxiety, depression and mental illness, those facing the challenge of sobriety, for caregivers and healthcare workers, for doctors and nurses, for all those who cheer and heal the sick. And for those who departed this life in the faith of Christ, that they may and rest in him, that they may rise in glory with us. And this day, that being safe under the protection of the divine mercy, guided by his holy word, strengthened by his Holy Spirit, we may serve and please him in everything that we do, being conformed to the likeness of his Son, that when he comes again, we may be found in him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, Grant us grace to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for those who unfeignedly love thee. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, shall be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers as may be most expedient for you. Amen.